I'm making this video for YouTube right now in the hopes that it might help somebody with their project and they kind of know what they're getting themselves into when they uh, when they do it so hey this is a um, 2011 Crown Victoria and I was driving I bought it at an auction drove it uh, for about a month and then I had a catastrophic engine failure I'm pretty sure I broke a rod uh, inside the engine because it was clattering and clanking in there pretty uh, pretty bad so the engines done so I thought hey I'll go to the wrecking yard and buy a new engine and then just slap a new engine in like people online say oh we're just gonna switch the engine out like it's you know an afternoon project well it's a little more difficult than that so I wanted to kind of give people a heads up on what's involved in doing it and for some people it might come very naturally because they're really super mechanically minded but for me I think it'll take a little more of a learning curve uh, doing something like this I could spend my time better doing something else rather than uh, rather than doing this but we'll kind of do a little walkthrough here and you can get an idea of what's what's going on what's involved so let's see this engine uh, deal right here I bought from Harbor Freight I hope you can see it in the frame there but it's like an engine leveling uh, device and I have there's some uh, little stub outs here on the block so I can put a chain on there and I put a few uh, cables and chains over here so I can tilt the motor and lift it out straight and not be all goofy looking and everything so here let me give you a little walk around of the motor so here's the top of the motor here's all these wiring harness stuff that goes to the computer on the uh, on the car right here I had to detach all that and here's more wiring harness stuff over here this this wiring harness right here went to the transmission look at all these plugs that I had to undo on the transmission the um, O2 sensors and all these uh, sensor relays right here and all this electronic uh, stuff and it was hard to get my hands up in that area so some people will pull the motor and the transmission out at the same time and that might be a better way to do it but this was the way that I opted uh, to do it so what else had to happen here here's a motor mount um, right here which basically was undoing one bolt underneath and one bolt on the other side uh, for the motor mount here's the air conditioning compressor right here and I undid the lines going to it here's the alternator and all the the wiring that comes off the alternator and, and more wiring harness stuff right here the what else do we have here power steering so I had to undo all the power steering um, stuff uh, in here in order to get that to pull away undo the coolant hoses here's a coolant hose here and here's a coolant hose right up here had to undo those more plugs that had to be undone uh, there what else are we looking at uh, here on the engine this is uh, where the bell housing uh, mounts up to the motor um, right back here so a lot of bolts had to be undone uh, back here uh, to get at uh, what I had to do here's a little line lineup pin right here there's another little lineup pin right here that's on the bell housing and what else did I do oh these bolts right here these are uh, it's metric so these are eight millimeter 1.25 uh, thread count bolts that I just screwed into the head here uh, to kind of as a lifting point and then these bolts over here these are uh, I think those are 12 millimeter I forget the thread pitch on those but 12 millimeter right here that go into the head there's one on this side one on the other but they don't put them on the front or the other opposite corners so you have to kind of rig something up which I did here with these uh, little things as well so that kind of helped me out with pulling the motor out on um, here but let me let's have a look inside the engine bay here so here's the engine bay with the uh with the bell housing and the transmission right back there you can see all the I had to undo all those bolts have a jack underneath it to support the the front of it um all the getting my hand back there in that tight space to undo those clips and stuff that wasn't an easy task uh the exhaust, um, you can see on either side there, I had to undo the, the nuts for the exhaust. And I think I heated those nuts up to help me um, 
with uh, undoing those nuts because they were kind of, they're really stuck on their penetrating oil and heating the nuts up and that sort of thing it was what I needed to do in order to get that to uh, come undone there. You can see these two little risers here on this K, K bar assembly, this cross member piece. If I undid the nuts underneath there with a, a socket and an extension, and that's the only two, those are the motor mounts uh, for the engine. So that was fairly easy um, to do, but a lot, a lot of other components weren't so easy. So what else do we have here? Here's all some uh, vacuum hoses and e uh, stuff going to the EGR, and, and here's some air conditioning stuff. Uh, over here, some air conditioning lines had to undo um, those over there. So another plug for the fan, had to pull the fan out um, to give me clearance to get this um, out of here as well, as well as a lot of other stuff on the motor. And you can see that right here. I actually ended up taking out all the windshield wiper assembly and that that stuff just below the, the windshield, the coolant reservoir, some of the, uh, some of this um, liner for the fender right here. I took some of that out so I could get to things easier. Obviously the air box uh, came out um, and some other uh, components, some shrouding around the radiator uh, fan and all that sort of thing. What else? Oh, here I have the starter sitting on the, on the table. You have to take the starter out in order to uh, um, get this, get this out of the engine compartment as well man the bolts some of those bolts on the starter they were they were really difficult to get to and I don't know what makes that easier but maybe it's just it's just hard so I guess now I'm at a point now where I don't know that I want to take on the project of buying a new engine from the wrecking yard and then installing it because if it was this difficult taking it out for me then putting it back together and remembering where all the plugs are and not missing one little thing because once I get it all back together and I go to start it and I'll be, you know, it won't run and then I'll be like, oh man, I forgot some stupid little thing and, uh, or there's some seal that I broke or there's some, uh, so this might be a project that I'm not going to complete, not going to finish, uh, for that reason. Um, I just don't have the, the skill set, uh, to, to complete a project like this to, um, do it correctly. So, so anyway, we'll see what I end up doing. I might, you know, be parting things out or I might, uh, um, what I, I might go ahead and do this. If someone encourages me to, um, just take this on like, oh my gosh, it's the simplest thing in the world to do something like this. So anyway, I don't know about that, but so here's the engine bay engine out. Here's the engine sitting up in the air, pulled it out with the old forklift here. So here it is floating in the air. Here, let me give you another view of it. So maybe there's something that you may want to pause and have a look at or something. I don't know. So here it is. Here's that. And here's that. And what else? Here's the car itself right here. So it's in really good shape, man. I wish I... That, that motor didn't break. And you never hear that sort of thing happening. My goodness, a, a stupid, uh, what, connecting rod to the piston broke. Gee, many Christmas, that, I've never heard of that happening before. So anyway, so there you go. Let's see, is there any signing off uh, comments that I need uh, here? Engine, engine bay, getting it out was not an easy task. Took me a long time to Un unhitch all that stuff from the from the motor so so there you go that's probably a good place to end the video and uh we'll see what happens be kind to me in the comments i don't you know i know i'm not an expert on doing this i know so that sort of thing you don't have to that goes without saying so so uh yeah there you go and uh thanks for watching